Welcome to the Mindset Strategy and Tools for quickly building a million plus dollar maid business. Let's start. First of all, I wanted to thank the Maid Summit and for organizing this webinar and giving me the opportunity to learn and to teach what I know to other business owners. I also wanted to thank you for joining me on this journey and for supporting. I know many of you supported me uh, by sharing your knowledge and by helping me with any type of challenges and the growth and the journey that we've experienced at Superb Meet. A little bit about myself for those of you who are not familiar with me. I'm an attorney, first generation immigrant, the CEO and founder of Superb Mates. Uh, I'm also a chief mommy of the Mommy Go, which is the natural energy shots for moms. And I'm also a director of communications for a Healthy Sunrise Foundation, which is an amazing nonprofit based in Vegas. My favorite job of all is being a mom to two kids, two boys. My mission in life is to make sure that other people can achieve their American dream. This is an epic photo of me that was just recently published in Las Vegas Sun and the Vegas Inc. Let's talk about my company briefly. It was founded in 2015. It's the top rated house cleaning service in Las Vegas, which is a highly competitive market. It was voted the best of Las Vegas by the review journal readers uh, in the, within the first year of being in business, which was uh, a huge surprise and a huge honor to us. We have over 4,500 clients. We were grossing over a million dollars annually after only two years in business. And uh, last year, or actually this year, we won uh, SBA's 2019 Small Business Persons of the Year, as well as the National Association of Women Business Owners Entrepreneur of the Year Award for the Southern Nevada. Again, it's an amazing honor. Uh, we are currently working on rolling out the national franchise for Superb Meats. So it's coming to the city near you. More on that later. But it was not an easy start. And that would be kind of an understatement. I was born in USSR, third generation Korean which uh, I know you look at me like you're Asian and you're born in the USSR. Yes, uh, there were Koreans there and were interned by Stalin. I'm the third generation of that internees in Uzbekistan. Grew up in kind of a snow globe um, environment. The snow, snow globe childhood, what I mean is it's isolated, but very safe. And uh, until everything fell apart, the Soviet Union fell apart, and we had the wild, wild East. So Central Asia says so the East. Within a very short period, I was kidnapped twice. More on that later, but spoiler alert, I survived both times. After that, I uh, got, I immigrated to USA. And uh, the first experience in USA was um, a terrible, terrible first marriage. And that was compounded by the cultural shock. I didn't know anything about anything. I've never seen an ATM machine in my life. I, had a, I didn't even know how to open a door to the restroom in the SeaTac International Airport upon landing because that door didn't have a handle. And every single door, up until that moment in my life had a handle so I was like walking around back and forth waving hands and it just would not open so uh, that also involved abject poverty it was really horrible we're talking welfare broken cars bad health and worst of all is the tremendous shame over not being able to afford anything or take care of my family Fast forward to today. I have an amazing life. I love it. Uh, you can see it has quite a, a lot of things that are going on. Like this is um, last 
summer in Athens in a luxury hotel. My youngest son is jumping into the pool uh, at the rooftop, uh, rooftop pool in Athens, which was amazing. Uh, this is us receiving an award in Washington, D.C. Uh, this summer. And uh, I have an opportunity to visit my friends all over the world anytime I want to. And uh, this is a photo of me and my really dear friends in Honolulu, uh, which we, it was, I believe it was last fall that we got together. You see, we're having a lot of fun. Uh, we're spending summers either in Europe or this year, a specific Northwest. A lot more family time uh, is, be, is being happening as a result of being successful in business and in life. I have an amazing cat who is quite expensive and very, very, very special. His name is Kuzma. And last week I ate uh, a bucket of oysters on the oyster farm. So that was yummy. So that is my life today in a nutshell. And how do we get from that to this? What it takes to uh, be successful. And that will apply in building a cleaning company as well as generally in life, as far as my experience. Number one is the right mindset, setting your thermostat right. Number two is the right strategy, moving your paws. That's my actually life motto, move your paws. And number three is the right tools, right? So if you get down to specific task, then you have to make sure you have the right tools to accomplish the task. I think that's where the part of quickly building your business, uh, successful business, that's you need the tools to build it quickly. So number one thing that you need is your um, mental state, or what I call is mental thermostat. So what does it mean? Thermostat, setting the thermostat means setting the level of achievement you're going to have, not you want to have, not your goal is, but you're going to have, so you can get your performance to that. So the way I visualize it, you can set your setting like this to high, and then your performance, no matter what happens to you, it will gradually move towards that setting. If you set it very low, it'll move this low, right? So I specifically found a photo for you of an old school thermostat, not one of those fancy Nest thermostats. So you can see and visualize it better. It seems like a sturdier setting for me. So how does the thermostat work? It's actually quite an amazing thing. Uh, in, this is the way it worked for me. So remember that kidnapping, um, or two kidnappings that I mentioned before. So we're gonna talk a little bit about that because I know you're probably curious. So when I was in college, back in my home country of Uzbekistan, and I was during that collapse of the whole system and society, right, the wild, wild east situation, uh, it was, there was a rampant crime and there was breakdown of all the not only communication systems, not only the economy, but as well as infrastructure, including public transportation. So the way you got around um, to go to places, you could do two things. You can catch a donkey. I'm just kidding, not a donkey, but basically you could ride a donkey if you really wanted to. Or two is you would hitch a ride. And there was no official taxi per se, so, but uh, you had to do what you had to do. So. At one point, my friend and I were going to college and we flagged down the car. And of course you pay you know, after the ride. So we flagged down the car. And instead of taking us to college, the two men who were in the car decided to take us to a different city altogether. And my friend uh, who had a very good sense of direction, she realized right away that we we're being taken away somewhere. And we're actually leaving the city limits already. She started crying and thrashing, and they told us they're not gonna release us, that we're just going to uh, go with them, right, forever. And uh, the, the car doors were locked, and it was kind of a stressful situation. But I remember at that time, my mental thermostat kicked in, and the setting that I had was, I shall not be harmed. 
So I you know, tapped a driver on the shoulder and I said, I have a message for you. And that's a message that was announced to me by my dad when he realized that there's a lot of danger and crime that's happening. It's kind of like overall sense of chaos. He told me, if somebody ever tries to harm you, you're going to relate to them this message. That my father, if you harm me at all in any way, my father will find you and your family will be scraping the brains of the pavement in that spot where you, you got me, right? So I just wanted to let you know that, that that was the message from my father. And I had absolute confidence in my eyes, in my voice, in my face to the point that those people pulled over to the side of the road and released, released us both and actually apologized, right? So um, the power of the mental thermostat setting, whether it's set by you yourself or your dad or someone else, is so, so strong that they'll override whatever else is going on in your life. Even the criminals, they can read it. So, yes, uh, my dad is not Liam Neeson, but actually he kind of is. So I wanted you to remember that example because it's very colorful, right? And this is how it applies to business. In business, the mental thermostat setting is everything. You cannot achieve anything without that determination. In fact, the number one predictor of success for me is your thermostat setting. Uh, I coach and help a lot of business owners to get to the next level or to break through their challenge. And I can tell within first five minutes, actually sometimes less than that, of whether they're going to be successful or not. And this is how. If the person I'm talking to is telling me we'll have a really tough um, environment for business, high taxes, a huge competition, the employees suck, uh, the economy sucks, and I'm so stupid, and I'm, I, just, I just don't know what the hell I'm doing, I know that person will not succeed because their setting is very, very low. They don't have what it takes in that mental state. Conversely, if somebody's telling me, look, Elena, you know, so I know like I have this problem, I have this challenge, you know, something is not working, but I know I can overcome it. All I need is that information or all I need this. So how do you guys fix that? I know that person will succeed. And it doesn't matter if that person was in, in business for 30 years and this person was never in business but this is the power of your setting, right? The mental setting. So make sure you set your thermostat high because if you set it low, it will actually become an obstacle or barrier. It will hold you back. You wouldn't be able to overcome it and you will forever struggle. If you set it high, that setting will carry you through, not only through kidnapping, but specifically in cleaning business, it will carry you through a lot of hardship. So one of the first clients we've had in Superb Mates was this lady from Hawaii. And I used to live in Hawaii and it's my favorite place in the world because people there are amazing. So as soon as I saw that there's a client from Hawaii, I was super excited. Oh, this is a person with aloha in the heart. They're gonna be so sweet. Yay, I was very happy. Well, I couldn't be further from the truth. You know, she was extremely, extremely demanding and rightfully so. But to this day, out of 4,500 clients, I would rate her in the top five, right? So, and that she was like within the first clients we've ever had. She made us go back at least seven times because she would always find things that she wasn't happy with. So we'll go back and we reclean. And then later, like half an hour later, or like the next day, she'll find something else and she'll make us come back. But because our thermostat was on high setting, we knew 
that we can overcome this. There should be a way to prevent this situation from happening. And we actually decided that we're going to clean so well, so well that it will satisfy even the demanding client such as her. And then we figured if we make that client happy, everybody else will be happy, right? So that was our insight. Uh, and it only came from having that setting in high. If it wasn't low, we would just say, you know what? This business is just not for us. We don't know what we're doing. We're a lawyer, an architect, right? We don't know the business. We don't understand the culture. The clients are terrible. This is Vegas. All these things that are constantly here. And we would just quit right there. But by having that mental thermostat set on high, we decided to learn and grow. And we did. Another thing that uh, it helped us with is, for example, difficulty in performance. Sometimes we're not perfect. We miss something, we scratch something, there's baseboards we missed, or the hoarder's home. Uh, the number two client we've had, uh, this, this actually doesn't represent it. We had a lot worse situation than this. This, this was quite, quite horrific in every room, and things were rotten, and things were full of trash, and Every surface was completely covered, just like this, but the things that are actually old, right, and quite smell. You can imagine the smell. It was just terrible. In fact, um, if it was my way, I would just take a flamethrower and just burn the whole thing and start from scratch. That was my initial inclination. And if your setting is on low, again, you might just quit and give up and just say, you know what, this is the worst thing ever seen in my life i mean look at this right you can just say that or if you set it on high you can say look like maybe there's a way we can help that person even if we don't clean this home there's some way there's some services some companies that will like maybe buy a hazard removal company or or something else how do we also uh, screen that kind of client so it doesn't so we don't even show up at their home right so we have something else so and if we do show up, if we do want to help them, maybe do we have an option of charging them accordingly? So, or maybe we want to do it for free as a charity. So all these things that we take control of and we decide that we are empowered and not merely a victim and we don't have that setting on the low again, right? So let's learn, let's overcome, let's grow. And if you have that setting again up here that we will, we will be successful, then you can power through even that. You can also overcome a lot of challenges like that are unfamiliar because as a business owner, you'll go through the stages of growth and stages of business where, for example, um, in the beginning, maybe there's not enough business. So do you, if you're setting on low, you'll be thinking, well, this is a bad market. Maybe I should give up or maybe I should lower my prices, or maybe I should do this. You'll do things that are wrong just because you have that fear, internal fear and the low setting. Or conversely, you know, when we became really, really successful, and it, was, it happened really quickly uh, because we, were, we had that setting on high and we kept pushing ourselves to deliver better results, we had overwhelming amount of calls, right? So it just we had like a mental breakdown at some point because we couldn't do anything with so many phone calls, so many messages, so, such a big demand for our service. Again, we could just say, business is just not for us. You know, I'm an attorney. I should just go back to law and just do law, right? Why not? I actually love law. So, you know, I can go back to my beloved profession. But for the setting that was set rightly high, we were able to say, look, it's just a challenge. Let's figure out. Let's come up with a system. Let's research the software that can handle this. Let's come up with the phone tree that will serve our clients well, but relieve the pressure. Let's engage the vendors who will be our backup, like virtual assistant service, right? We, um, the virtual assistant service that we hired back in those days is still helping us today. We use them in slightly different capacity as a backup, but they're still there. Another thing that the setting, the, the high enough setting serves you well with is the problems with employees because our business, the main business, does not have the machinery 
it does not have products it's basically people that's all you have you and people business so it's people clients and people employees right and your job is to kind of balance between those two and make sure everybody's happy so it's very difficult to make a large group of people happy but you know, we try so when you deal with employees they have sometimes personal struggles right they could be uh, not engaged with the company or with the work they do because of the personal challenges um, for instance uh, sometimes we hire people and they have been out of job for a while they don't have enough money to pay their rent and so they will be cleaning they'll be distracted embarrassed ashamed all these feelings that I myself felt back in the day so uh, with the right setting if your setting is we're building a successful company that's going to be investing into our employees and contribute to communities we're here to stay we're here to produce outstanding results you would help those employees right which is what we did so we serviced we served them in a way that allowed them to overcome those challenges and show up 100 percent and embrace that client so our mindset is always we will learn from this and grow. So every time something happens in, in, in the field or out of the field, and you know, instead of panicking and freaking out, sometimes, frankly, after panicking and freaking out, our conclusion was always, are we gonna close the company? No, we're going to learn from this and grow. If you adopt this mindset, you will have the same result. I guarantee it. The next step is your strategy, which is you got to move your paws. So move your paws is actually my motto. You know how Nike is just do it. Mine is move your paws. You might remember this fable about two frogs that fell into a bowl of cream. One of them drowned and another one started moving his paws or rather the legs, right? Frog legs kept moving them and moving them until the cream became butter. And then the frog was able to get out and survive. So my life's motto, again, is being that frog. I am that frog. So this is my personal experience. When I was in law school, new immigrant, I, I think I immigrated in 1999 at the end, and I was in law school in 2000. Um, uh, it was, if you don't see this, I'll show you. I was also a new mom. So when I got admitted, I was uh, quite broke, um, newly immigrated, and also a nine, month, my nine months pregnant, right, with my first child. So my first day of law school, the assistant dean took me out of class and paraded me to every professor's office, and they collectively tried to talk me out of proceeding to school because they said that you are a foreigner, which is true. You don't speak English that well, which was also true, and you're nine months pregnant, which was very true. And they said that even the people who are native born Americans and speak fluent English, and all our culture and all the habits and everything, and have no kids, they a lot of times fail. We lose 30% of our class uh, first year of law school because of how difficult it is. So why don't you go and chill? You can come back later if you really want to, but you know, just go. Um, I felt so overwhelmed by this and um, so sad that um, I came out of um, this meetings and I went into foyer and I sat down on the big leather couch and I started crying, like sobbing and really feeling sorry for myself. Kind of like that, right? Just like exactly like that, in fact. Uh, except that I was nine months pregnant. So uh, my classmates came out and this was University of Idaho. So they're all Idaho boys with like um, hats and with baseball hats and rifles and trucks and they said what's going on in here and I said well you know they really they want me to they want me to quit and I don't want to quit this is my only hope and for a better future and all of that so they said you know what don't worry about it we'll help you we got you we got you so we'll do anything we'll bring your notes 
we, you know, we'll take care of your baby. You know, if you have baby right in class, uh, we have a paramedic. One of one of the classmates, uh, Roger, he was paramedic. So he's like, we got you, don't worry. So with their help, uh, I did manage to survive the first year of law school. And not only that, but I also managed to graduate in the top 10 or 15% of my class, cum laude, and went on to have a successful career as a litigation attorney in Honolulu. So um, how, what did I do to get there, right? So that's the question. So, well, I sat in the front row of each class and I would listen to what the professor was saying and I would record by hand every single word that came out of their mouth because I couldn't understand some of the words. There are archaic words or just unfamiliar words and at home, I would sit with a dictionary, I would translate, right? I would translate uh, every sentence until it made sense. I would go to the library and I would study there after classes. I read every single supplemental book that was available there. I watched every tape uh, and they had a little media room. So every tape, uh, videotape, audio tape, whatever was in there, I absorbed it because I wanted to get a little bit of like advantage um, because I was so disadvantaged, right? So, and it ended up working. And you can imagine how difficult it was because I also had a newborn um, baby and abject poverty, uh, difficult marriage. And I also had two jobs as a waitress. And I was the world's worst waitress, just the worst. Like I was excellent as an attorney, terrible as a waitress. Somehow it takes different skills. How does this apply to business? So in business, and especially in main business, you will have setbacks. You will also have fears. So in service companies, again, like we deal with people. And with people, there's so many variables. There's different morals, especially something like Vegas, right? We have uh, truly a melting pot. So you have different morals, different moods situations, um, issues, desires. Uh, it's really impossible to make everybody happy and everything to run smoothly. Everything changes in May business. You have sick kids. It's like a bane of our existence. We love kids, all of ours, our moms in, in my company. And uh, this is part of life. And, and both clients and employees have sick kids, especially when there's like a flu season coming through then you have like collapse of everything. Like, like people are calling out sick and clients are calling out sick and it's just a madhouse. You also have um, something like an emergency, like a um, car crash or a pop tire. Actually, like the first time the tire, flat tire happened, it was like, oh my gosh, what are we gonna do, right? It was kind of stressful. Like by the time it happens like 25th time, you're like, right, it's, it's no big deal, right? So we have, a, we have a procedure for that. We know what to do and it's just, it's, it's a piece of cake. Um, you have just forgetfulness. Somebody just dropped the ball because they forgot. Some client forgot about an appointment, right? What do you do? An employee forgot, a, forgot the key somewhere in, in the car or in their grandma's home, or whatever. So they forgot to enter the order. Um, they forgot to send a reminder. Something happened, so you have those challenges happening as well. So you've got to, you've got to survive. And, or, you know, somebody has seven cats. Or we had somebody who had, like, seven pigs, actually live pigs living in the house. So it's something that, you know, it's part of the human nature is to be diverse and to have issues, right? So you need to keep moving your paws to be able to overcome those issues. Just keep moving them. So when you're in that situation, when I'm in that situation, that's kind of like something happened and I just keep, I just feel like this doggy here, just keep moving my paws no matter what, right? Just keep going, keep swimming and then you will get there. So you have this setting and you keep swimming towards that setting, right? Also, equally important is collaborate. So I think for me, the Avengers are a perfect example of collaboration where everybody has their own talent. No hero has everything, right? Everybody has uh, weaknesses and strengths, but when you combine, it becomes 
a, a huge force and it gives you a lot of momentum and again allows you to grow quickly if you just do it by yourself yes you can win the battle but it will take you a lot longer and be a lot more painful so how do we collaborate we collaborate with our employees so our employees a lot of them are immigrants and a lot of them come from underprivileged backgrounds and we help them to achieve their american dream we invest in them as people so not only do we offer flexible schedule to go around their family obligations around building their business or building their education or career or getting licensed right we provide them health insurance because we take care of them retirement benefits because a lot of them don't have retirement a lot of cleaning industry people do not have retirements so we wanted to fix that so we offer that we invest into home buying we have home buying program that we contribute towards that down payment and we help them in general to like kind of get there a lot of people dream about buying their first home uh, we help in their professional development whatever a lot of our employees are could be doctors they just immigrated and they need immediate cash flow or we have professional dancers computer engineers we have professors you just never know where they're coming from. We have an artist. So we help them in any way it takes. And even after they depart, they leave us, they refer clients and employees to us, right? Um, also, when we onboard the employees, uh, I know from my own experience and just from dealing with a lot of employees and candidates for employment uh, that they come frequently after a period of unemployment and they struggle, right? And sometimes even when they're employed, they struggle too. So we are aware of that. So we, off, we connect them with resources, with food, with diapers, uh, with childcare organizations, with, my goodness, we sometimes help them with their bills, like utilities are turned off or something, we help them with that. If they come from abusive household, we help to retrieve them. So we do a lot of things. Uh, above and beyond what other employers would do and naturally what that results in is the employees then go above and beyond for our company they refer other employees they really really care about our company and they do a more much much better job than they would otherwise right so uh, you have some photos uh, of us collaborating with our employees. Uh, this is uh, Delon Lorena. They just announced that they're buying their first home, so we're quite happy. Uh, we have actually a Wonder Woman painted on our office building, and that's to inspire and encourage those of uh, our team who come from hardship. We want them to feel powerful, want them to feel strong like a Wonder Woman, so they can override whatever dark history that they had and rise and so this is uh, i wanted to give you an example of difference between the work of people who are not cared for and they don't feel like they cared for and our staff so uh, a lot of times we uh, get hired to redo other companies work and you can see like to the left the different i mean it's still clean sink right to the left but look at the one on the right right or like the shower you can see the shower on the left that's we were hired after somebody else already cleaned again and this is the, the shower on the right so you love somebody if you take care of them they will do this kind of job where you will have you will like literally walk into the shower door because it's so clean it's transparent right microwave oven bathtub refrigerator everything looks exponentially better because you treated your employees exponentially better. So it's not just like a good from humanitarian perspective, it's good from business perspective. So another way we collaborate is we collaborate with community. So we always ask for their help. You just ask, we need the bookings, right? We need business, so give us the business. You have to ask. If you don't ask, the answer is no. We ask for information. We're part of a lot of Facebook groups and of business owners and professional cleaners. And it's one of the most, uh, one of the best discoveries uh, of my whole journey in uh, this business entrepreneurship is like community of fellow entrepreneurs being so supportive, 
providing all kinds of advice and information. And I received a lot of support and, uh, you know, I, I wasn't afraid to ask and I did ask and I did receive. And now I'm very happy to provide the same support and guidance and help other companies grow and get to the next level. This just makes me endlessly happy and fulfilled. We also ask for referrals. So you can ask your clients for referrals. You can ask your community partners for referrals. Hey, if you like their service, if you like our people, please refer more business to us. You have to ask and then they will give you. Ask and you shall receive, right? Reviews. Our reviews are really, really important. Uh, it's basically your reputation is everything in maid service. So make sure your reputation is stellar. Ask for those reviews and this, you will receive those. This is just two examples, a National Association of Women Business Owners and Asian Chamber of Commerce. I, I know some people will say like, I'm not one of those people, I'm not a schmoozer, I'm not doing this, I'm not doing that. Neither am I, I'm very introverted. I did not like hit the pavement, but you know what? It's not about you, it's not about what I feel, it's about the families that depend on me to feed uh, to feed themselves, put the bread on the table, right? So get over yourself and go do what it takes. We also collaborate by contributing to numerous local charities. One of the main ones is Healthy Sunrise Foundation. Um, they provide uh, pregnant women's health care. So the idea, they have a great idea that, hey, to save a lot of babies and make sure they're born healthy, why don't we take care of pregnant women's health? And that will help the babies, right? So they um, do it primarily in Africa, but they're also unrolling um, some services here in the U.S. And I'm very, very proud to be associated with them and to be able to support them, to be able to contribute to them. Uh, that is just amazing. And uh, I credit the business success and the business status that we have to being able to do that. Right? So um, we also just support a sustainability charity. Uh, when uh, Route 91 shooting, Madeley Bay shooting happened a couple of years ago, uh, our company stepped up and we did cleanings for first responders and for victims' families. Um, I think it just, it just puts you in a different category altogether. If you're part of the community, even though I've heard so many times people saying, well, Vegas is so transitory. It's just so, nobody cares about anybody. It's so callous. But guess what? It turned out to be completely different. If you are part of the community, if you're contributing to them, they will contribute to you. They will support you. They will embrace you. And this is exactly what happened to us. And, you know, again, this is Las Vegas. This is not, it's a sin city. It's not you know, a small town in Midwest where everybody knows everybody, right? Um, but there's enough love, there's enough of goodwill in Las Vegas where we actually were able to thrive very quickly. But you have to do your part. You cannot just be give me, give me, give me, right? You have to, you have to give yourself. Uh, we also help individuals in tough situations. Just had discussion the other day with somebody on uh, one of the Facebook forums where uh, you know somebody, one of the clients, uh, fiance passed away and they're grieving. And one of the things that I suggested in, in the situation was basically a hoarder's home, right? Um, because the, the woman was depressed, obviously. And that's understandable. And I just commented that we, in, in that situation, we would clean that home for free, right? We'll do our best, we'll do whatever it takes and we'll just try to help her out. And we have done it many, many times, even when, frankly, we couldn't afford it. So the comment I received back on that was, well, hopefully someday I can, I can uh, I'll be in a financial position to do it for free. I totally understand that response. I totally respect it because you can't give away your labor for free all the time. But if you want to grow, if you want to have a lot of momentum quickly, you have got to do your part. You have got to do things that maybe sometimes don't make financial sense, but they will still make your company much stronger and they will give you a lot of goodwill that will help you in the future. We also, in addition to all of that, we refer business and help to many, many companies and people. I personally help a lot of companies. Um, a lot of people reach out to me for business advice and I always give that. Um, I mentor people, I coach people, I coach companies, 
And it's very satisfying to me to see success, somebody struggling and overcoming a struggle and becoming successful. Uh, it's always very rewarding. Uh, we even collaborate with our direct competitors. Uh, quite a few of them are my friends and I'm very, very proud of it. So one of the things I'm really proud of in life is being able to actually um, have friends like that, right? Who have divergent interests, but we support each other. I just referred another client to um, actually uh, our direct competitor and I helped them get started. So I'm really happy about that. Um, another way to, call, to think about collaboration is in maid business, we clean the home, right? But there's certain things we don't do, like we don't clean the gutters. We don't, move the, we don't move the furniture. We don't do buy a waste removal. We don't do um, landscaping. We don't do window wash. I mean, we do some, but it's very limited. So uh, if you collaborate with all the service providers, all of them refer business to you and you refer business to all of them. That's what creates that. It's like a multiplier effect. All of a sudden you don't grow like this. You grow like this, right? Because you have... Um, so many people, so many companies contributing, all of their clients contributing to your growth, not just your own. And again, you know, from the outside perspective, you can say, well, it looks like you just like being nice and that's why you're doing it. It's not just that, it's also just a, something that's a good business practice, right? It actually pays, in our business, it pays to be nice. Again, to recap, the principles for success and the way to grow the maid service to over a million dollars within a short period of time is set your mental thermostat, right? Move your paws and collaborate. Now it's your turn. So ask yourself, what is your current thermostat setting? Is it like over here, like or way down through the floor? Is it over here or is it over here? It should be up here, right? So if it's not up here, set it, like push it up right now. And again, it shouldn't be the goal. You should have that mental awareness that you should be at that level. And super important. Once you set it, just start moving your paws. No matter what's happening, no matter what challenges, no matter how many babies are sick that day, keep moving your paws, just like that dog or like a frog. Whatever analogy works for you, just move your paws. And lastly, collaborate. Just take out the piece of paper right now and write down everybody you can collaborate with, all the different companies, right? And don't be shy, you know, the worst that can happen, no one is gonna take you out and shoot you. The worst that can happen, they'll just say no. You just move on to another one of like hundreds of companies that you can collaborate with, right? And just meet with them for a cup of coffee, tell them about your business, ask them about their business, start referring them. Start referring business to them. Um, one of the things that people always ask me when they at that kind of meeting, they, they say, how much uh, do I owe you if you refer a client to me, right? And you know what I always say? You don't owe me anything. I just want to do it. I want to make sure, first of all, you'll do a good job. And that's why I'm meeting with you. And I'll just send you the business. And of course, what happens? They start sending business to us. Right, so, and that's how it works. If you start saying like, well, for every client, I want $5 or whatever, it's just not gonna work. Give it to them, right, and they'll give it to you. Um, so that's basically it. Uh, I do have some tools that will help you grow and help your business to get to the next level. First of all, you can contact me. This is my top secret personal email. You can email Elena at superbmates.net. Uh, very importantly, it's, not .com, it's .net. And uh, if you want, I can send you free business snapshot report. Um, you can do self-assessment or we can hop on the free 30 minute Zoom consultation and we can go over that report and uh, we'll go over if you have any question or struggle or problem, you just let me know. Hopefully I can help you figure it out. Um, I do it all the time, so <laughs> I know. And uh, I also have Cleaning Academy course because a lot of times people ask me, well, I want to know specifically what vacuum cleaner you used. And sometimes I tell them, you know what, it's not as critical as to have those other things that I talked about, right? The strategy, uh, overall strategy is far more important and the mindset. But sometimes if you want to know exactly the checklist, exact forms that we use, 
exact tools that we use uh, in like down to the sponges and down to you know how we create our marketing and all of that stuff uh, we do have a cleaning academy for that and it's completely online uh, it's been quite successful uh, frankly I normally don't even advertise it I just made it just so because I kept kept getting asked about it so many times I can get you a discount code just for this uh, purposes for the maid summit uh, but you have to email me and request it so I don't forget um, also another thing is if you are in a town that you feel has a lot of potential and you have a business that's been gaining traction but you feel like you need to have a lot more momentum or you just want to um, dominate your market very quickly Right, and you want to do it right then maybe there's opportunity for us to collaborate in franchise setting so the way the franchise thing works is I'm collaborating with one of the top marketing experts in the country for the cleaning company he is the bomb yeah it seems amazing and he's quite well known and then I also collaborate with partners with another uh, top expert in the country and that's for cleaning business building right so he's also quite famous quite an expert I'm actually quite like frankly very very honored to work with both of them and so we are creating the next generation franchise that's going to address a lot of shortfallings that the old school franchises have and um, our goal joint goal is to not make a maximum of money out of like maximum of people is to give an opportunity to achieve the American dream to as many people as we can, especially layers of population that are traditionally overlooked or underprivileged, right? Uh, a lot of, I feel like a lot of times women, for example, or minorities, they don't get uh, as much attention from franchisors. And that's a shame because that deprives them of opportunity to gain that momentum quickly. So, if you are interested in that, please let me know. I have a sign up form on our website, supermace.net, but I can also send you a link and we can hop on a call and talk about that as well. I hope that you have having a good time learning a lot. Uh, and if there's anything I can do to help you, please reach out to me. Don't be shy. A lot of people help me and I helped a lot of people. Have a good day. Goodbye.